Okay, well, we're starting to get back into the normal groove of things around here after all the fires and stuff have happened. And I've finished up a bunch of my honeydews, like uh, cleaning the garage and cleaning the gutters. Uh, and I'm finally ready to spend some time back working on the bus. Uh, after our last trip, I got a fairly long squawk list. Uh, you got an old bus like this, there's always something that comes up, uh, you know, during every trip that you need to deal with when you get home type thing. So the list had several items get added to it. And there's been some stuff that's kind of hanging out that uh, I haven't gotten to uh, yet. So uh, today's project, I think, is going to be to work on the subwoofer. Um, right behind the driver's seat here, I'll show you in a second, there is a subwoofer and an amplifier. Um, it's never really worked correctly, and I've um, spent some time diagnosing it before. And I just I need to get to the bottom of what's going on with this thing. So there's the sub. It's, uh, you know, pointed directly at the back of the driver's seat. And there's a JBL amp here. Um, there's also a, a thermostat there. But in order for me to fix this, uh, I've got to remove this amp from the wall so that I can get to the wires on the bottom of it. What I've determined so far is that the subwoofer, let's see if I get a shot of it here, not really, the, uh, the subwoofer is set up for two ohms and uh, typical car stereo speakers are four ohms and I need to determine if the issue, the, the issue is that the, the amp doesn't play any noise most of the time. Sometimes it does, but most of the time it does not. Um, I need to determine if the problem is the amp or the sub configuration that's hooked up to it. Um, I've had this offer here before. I have tried to remove this subwoofer before and get to the coils on the back of it. It's glued into that cabinet. So in order for me to determine what's going on, I'm going to hook up a, a home speaker to it. This is 8 ohms. Um, and see if it functions properly with an 8 ohm speaker hooked up to it. And then I'll go from there. And either the sub is shorted out or something, or the amp is not handling the 2 ohm setup correctly. Um, I know many of these amps are configurable to handle that. Um, this one, the way that it's wired, is not. It may be possible to configure it correctly to work with the 2 ohm if is set up with uh, uh, dual voice coils on the back of the sub. But I gotta first determine if that's what's going on or if it's something else. So I'm gonna tear into this here. Okay, so the input power on this thing is connected to a circuit breaker. So I ran it until it cut out and measured that to make sure it wasn't the circuit breaker tripping and it was not. I also was concerned that it's heat related. So I put a fan up here blowing on it to see if that would change the situation. And it has not. Um, I did determine that for two ohm speaker operation, bridged mode is not correct. Um, that's designed to run into a four ohm subwoofer, not two. So, some of these speakers have dual voice coils, coils in them, I understand, and if I can run the channels independently 
at two ohms, that would be fine. Or if I can change the way that it's wired internally, that would also be useful. But I took all the screws off this thing and it's glued, which would be as expected, right? Because this sub enclosure has got to be airtight and not rattle. Uh, the subwoofer itself is glued in to the cabinet as well. So I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to get to the voice coils on this wiring. I guess I'll pull that cord off and see if I can see anything in there. See if that comes out. I've not hooked it up to my 8 ohm speaker yet because... Uh, it's kind of a pain in the ass to get to those wires back there. They're really short. I probably need to do that just to see if the amp is malfunctioning. But, I mean, it works for a while, and then it cuts out. So, I just, I have a feeling that just dry, well, I shouldn't say it works all the time. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work at all. But I just, I have a feeling that driving the two ohms in bridge mode is the issue. Um, okay, I'm proceeding with uh, pulling these speaker wires out. It's a 1 16th Allen. It can only be accessed from this side, flipping it over essentially, or from the front side. So I'm getting those out. I'm going to hook up this house speaker. So yeah, after several hours of dinking around here and trying different things, um, I hooked this up to the house speakers and it was still distorted and bad. I hooked up this 2 ohm subwoofer in non-bridged mode, just in one channel, and it's still distorted. And so I think my amp is blown. So I called a local car stereo shop. I'm gonna take it out there tomorrow. And um, they said they would test it for me for 10 bucks if I, if I remove it. Um, they were asking all the right questions. I called, uh, I called a different uh, store that I'm actually much more familiar with and they put me on hold. So, you know, after holding for a while, I hung up and called the other place and they're like yeah bring it on out and um, asked me you know about the specs on my speaker which I don't know because they're you know it's glued in there and I can't get to the back of it but he said he says uh, well I've been doing this for 22 years and um, we used to sell audio bond which is the brand of the speaker he's like bring it on out I can probably tell we tell you what it is um, and then you know they'll match it to the amp properly. I want to get a, a mono uh, two ohm stable amp and put that in here, and uh, that'll be that'll be awesome. You know, when this thing works, it's it's impressive, but uh, you know it's unreliable. So yep. I decided to fire up the bus, so I'll give you a little audio treat here. Uh, Detroit Diesel in a shop. shut it off <laughs> well today is tomorrow and uh, I picked up my buddy Mike and we're going out to uh, outrageous audio in Gresham Oregon to pick up uh, a new amp for my bus it's a nice day
of that turbo bouncing off the buildings. So there it is. Got that uh, installed today, or well, I installed it with the uh, help of my buddy Mike. Works good. It is powerful. 400 watts. <laughs> 400 watts. Certified for 422. So, yeah, that is pretty impressive when it's running. I'm not going to demonstrate it for you because YouTube has, uh, you know, um, copyright stuff. So, I'm not going to do that. So the other thing the amp's got is this Bluetooth remote that lets you adjust how much gain it has remotely. And I'm probably gonna mount this right down here, underneath this stuff, or maybe right there. So yeah, it makes it a little, a little handier. And then it's got a little light that comes on if it's clipping which is useful to know and this mode is for um, older music that's uh, you know lacking bass you can turn that on to get a little better bass response just by clicking this wheel so you can toggle these modes and phase is um, to flip it you know, if the if it's out of phase, you can flip it so the positive and negative are essentially reversed. I don't know why you need that on a remote, but yeah. So yeah, works good. You know, it's it's probably about equivalent to my old JBL 180 watt when it was working. I mean. It really, it really doesn't perform any better than what was in here. I, it's probably limited by my uh, enclosure and sub somewhat because it's you know it's a 10-inch sub and you know a custom enclosure. Actually, the guy brought out one from the store just to show me <laughs> that it can do better than it does in my particular situation. So, yeah. chore for the day is to wash the bus because we got that ash on things from the fire and I understand it's got some you know properties that are not good for your paint so I gotta get that crap off of here <laughs> 